we are about to get into the mental shifts, I want you all to take a breath again. <laughs> this day is about complete inner transformation and complete healing, right? The transformation can't begin until you're completely healed. And so on this journey, um, we will um, heal as we grow. But it's important going back to, <clears throat> excuse me, transformation. You know, in scripture, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So our minds have to be renewed for a transformation to come. And so this is why the mental shift is so important. The renewing of our minds. Right. And, you know, if the state of the world is a is a reflection of ourselves, then there means that there is still, you know, so much uh, that needs to be healed mentally. And so we are about to get into that. Um, and so thank you for your comments. Um, <clears throat> I am so very honored um, to welcome our next guest. Um, we are going to uh, truly, truly be blessed and um, hear from people who are who are walking the walk. OK, like, you know, we talk about shifting from doing to being right so we have to get clear in who we are and and strong in our inner being but then there becomes a moment when god calls us to be doers of the word right so when we're clear on the word we believe the word we have to become doers of the word and you know when we talk about romans 12 2 and and the renewing of your mind you know my next my next guest, I feel, um, embodies this um, in such an amazing way, um, and and is is really shifting the culture. Because remember, as we have our own inner transformations, we transform our lives. Then we can be in, in a place to transform the culture, right? And so, I want to welcome my next guest. So, <clears throat> Shanti, I see you here. I'm going to add you to the stream. Hi, Hi. Shanti. Hi, Katie. How are you today? I'm good. The sun is shining. God is good. It is, right? I need yeah. to, I want to thank my lighting because it's, it's the sun. It's the Lord today giving me It looks amazing. Light. You look amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so great to see you again. <laughs> it's good to see you too. And thank you for um, just including me in such an incredible summit. Of course. And thank you for making the time and thank you for all the amazing things that you're doing. I know it's not easy. Um, it's not. And, you know, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this session because um, I'm definitely very honest and open about my challenges. And so we have a yeah. mutual friend, Free Warren, and he kept mm -hmm. telling me about it. And I've been dealing with <laughs> physical health challenges and mm -hmm. I, just, I had a tough week struggling mm -hmm. mentally. Um, and so mm -hmm. you can go into that mental shift and there ebbs and flows, right? Absolutely. And yes. so and looking I, forward to getting into the dialogue today. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for your transparency um, because people need to know that what we just talked about, continuing to walk this out, you know, can be challenging. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, God is here to shift us um, so that we can walk in freedom um, and to really face um, whatever we're called to do, you know, with complete confidence, wholeness, healing. Um, so I believe that whatever you need, Shanti, you're going to receive today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and I'm happy to be connected again. Um, so for all of you here today, I want to welcome music industry veteran, mental health advocate, author, and speaker, Shanti Das. She is the founder of Silence the Shame. And I just want to first start by giving you your flowers and honoring you because I feel just that statement alone, Silence the Shame, I feel has really powerfully allowed our culture to really openly talk about the state of our mental health um, in a way that I had never experienced before. Um, I had heard about it. Um, I heard about your um, organization 
um, before Free became a part of this. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, Free's our next guest. So this is all connected. Mm -hmm. Again, God just made the connections. And, um, and so as I um, was able to engage in different ways, you know, through different events and all of these things, you know, I've just always deeply felt in my heart that this um, is needed in such a desperate way that um, I, I'm just so grateful for you and all the lives you've touched. Um, well, thank you so much. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and and you founded Silence to Shame um, six years ago in 2015. Yes. yes. Um, really to normalize conversations around mental health. Um, and specifically within communities of color where we don't talk about this, right? we It's been a silent thing for so long, um, but it was silent because of how much shame it's brought people. And so um, you really brought to life something that was unspoken for so long. And so I, I'm curious to know what have you observed about the mental health state of our society um, over these six years, because um, you've been able to engage in a way in this forum. Um, and I, I, I'm i just curious to hear, like, what, what is your perspective on this, the state of, of our society's mental health? First of all, again, you know, kudos to you, Candice. Um, I'm just really proud of what you're doing and what the young generation is doing in terms of shifting the narrative and, and about so many things within our culture. So thank you again mm -hmm. for your work and for including me. Yes. Wow. The last six years, it's been really interesting because I felt like, you know, prior to me really going through my own mental health struggles, although they date back, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I kind of first started seeing them creep in. But over the last six years, one of the things that just stands out the most to me is that it's a lot of us dealing with a lot of the same feelings, mm -hmm. unfamiliar feelings, and we just don't know because we don't talk about it, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's still a lot of, of shame and stigma, I think, that is around mental health and wellness. And I tell everybody all the time that we all have mental health. We may not all have a mental illness. And so you add on the last couple of years in terms of the racial trauma that we've experienced, particularly in the African-American community, the, pandem the pandemic, um, more African-Americans and black people dying at disproportionate rates um, due to COVID-19. And just younger people in general, when I look at my timeline now, it's filled with a lot of death and a lot of loss and grief. Mm -hmm. And so people are stressed out. Mm -hmm. They are anxious. You know, some people are going back into the workplace, but they're still really anxious about that and not really sure. We're trying to live our best lives and travel and get out there mm -hmm. and, and fulfill our goals and dreams. But there is still, you know, I think a bit of hesitancy and anxiety that even goes along with that. So we're, we're living in some really interesting times. And that's why I appreciate you adding in a mental health component um, to your yeah. summit today because, again, mental health is something that we all have. Um, mm -hmm. now the challenges, obviously, we may or may not experience and, and some of us go through similar things, but you know, some of it could be hereditary, some of it could be situational, it could be a job loss or um, a lot of childhood trauma that some of us yeah. are now starting to unpack. And I was talking to a dear friend of mine the other day who is a staple in our community. And he said, you know, and I say this in the most humble way, he thanked me as well for starting this conversation for our, our generation and especially for the culture. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I hadn't started unpacking a lot of childhood trauma yeah. until now. And understanding that it was okay to kind of unpack that and talk through it and, and, and again, shift that narrative within his life and his family. So right, it's a lot of people out there that are suffering in silence. And so although I really feel like the younger generation um, is being more open to talking about therapy and uh, talking about their problems and sharing, we still have a long way to go as a society and as a culture. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why this work it really is a, a ministry and an assignment from God. It took me a while to get to that point, but I realized that, you know, they're just, they're soldiers in every arena in life, right? 
Yes. So I know that you feel a shift in what you're doing, right? And Free was telling me how you're pivoting and doing some different things. And so I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit more, but being able to answer that call is, is, is such a powerful thing, but more importantly, being able to recognize when that assignment is placed on your life um, and right. what, what to do with that. Cause it's right. a lot of, you know, hurt and pain and loss and things that I've been through and struggles and, and I feel like I'm still in the struggle, but because I see so many of my family members and friends and peers still suffering through it, that is why I persevere. This was not a good week for me, as I mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting through some physical health challenges and it's, it's tough being a, a black female owning a nonprofit. It's not like raising money for a for-profit where you got all these investors coming in Right. We're still a small organization doing a lot of work. Yeah. We want to expand, but we need operational funds like any other industry. And so sometimes, you know, the weight of that, obviously I'm the founder, I'm the head of the organization. So that falls on me and it, it just weighs down a lot on my spirit. And my mother is in the later stages of Alzheimer's and I lost my sister two years ago and then being mm -hmm. sick. And so you find yourself sometimes in these funks and yeah. I was invited out to a good friend of mine, real swanky birthday party with a lot of my industry peers. And I just, I didn't have the energy in my spirit and I just wasn't in a good place. And I was honest about it, but that's the freeing part. That is the shift that happened in my life that when mm -hmm. I'm not feeling good, I'm not embarrassed to tell somebody I'm having a mental health challenge today. Right. Not in a good place. It doesn't mean I'm going to have a meltdown and have suicidal ideation again. It just means I'm just not in a good place today. And so mm -hmm. I do need to let the sunshine in. I do need to yes. get outside. I do. And that's why I pushed through because I initially wanted to pre tape this with you because I was trying to right. like muster up this strength to give your viewers what I felt like they needed. But maybe what they need is just my authentic yes. self. Yes. My honesty yes. and say, like, <laughs> Today's yeah. a better day than yesterday. And I'm here. Exactly. So exactly. And that's the freeing part. All I want you is to show up as your authentic self. Yep. And because I feel like a lot of the mental challenges comes from putting on all the time every day. Like, exactly. oh, we're oh, so tired it's, of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so trust me, I understand this is a safe space. Um, and I understand your burden, you know, being the founder of a tech company, right? It takes money to make things happen. It yeah. does. And that's just the honest truth. Yep. Um, I do believe that God is releasing resources in this hour. And I believe that, you know, again, that's the, the, the power and importance of community um, because, you know, in, in the body, in the kingdom, um, we lack nothing. We have everything we need. We have all the resources. And I think God is shifting us in this way. Like we, so I'm just going to declare you have everything you need, Shanti. Amen. I received that. Team is going to be flourishing, growing, full staff, deploying resources, because listen, this is necessary. Like we're, we're in a, in a really uh, dire state of need for our mental health mental well-being and so all your needs will be met i am just declaring that for you right now thank you and can i just say to add a little bit to your last question i'm seeing people talk about mental health candace that mm -hmm. wouldn't normally bring it up on their timeline or in their discussion mm -hmm. saying how much of a dire need they're seeing one of my colleagues mentioned it on her timeline about how so many people in new york some of her friends or people that she know are suffering and so to your point, it's it the resources don't meet the need right now. And so yeah, we gotta mm -hmm. do better as a community yeah. and really try to put more resources out there for our we community. really have to do better. I believe God is shifting things because I feel like um, you know, a lot of uh time, money, energy is going to things that are just not necessary. <laughs> and we need to put it towards the things that are really gonna help our people. Like, that's right really help our people that's right um, so you know with these mental health challenges that you've observed what are some root causes of um these challenges that people that might help identify you know some root causes that might there might be experiencing 
Absolutely. And thanks for that question. And so as an advocate, I always like to turn to the science and the facts. Yes. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to read from yes, a website that I love called betterhelp.com. It's a really great okay. resource to mm -hmm. find a therapist or a clinician. But, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you could have symptoms of excessive worrying, right? Mm -hmm. That can lead to anxiety and depression, whether you're worrying about your family member or your job or the goals that you've created or your health. Um, when when it's excessive and you can't find that yeah. good balance between prayer, right, and medication mm -hmm. and you're just constantly worrying, you have to be careful with that because that could definitely lead um, to anxiety and depression. Also, feeling restlessness on edge or not being able to sleep. You know, yeah. we're, we're supposed to have between seven and eight hours of sleep. Some people I know can have four hours of sleep and totally function fine, but the body really does need rest. And so if you're yeah. restless and not being able to sleep, that could be another problem. If you're feeling worthless or hopeless, those are key mm -hmm. signs. When I was going through my suicidal ideation in 2015, I really just had lost hope. Mm -hmm. And that is... Um, that was rock bottom for me because I was always happy, vibrant, you know, team mm -hmm. player in the music business, wanting to be around friends and family and, you know, life of the party kind of thing. And I just withdrew. So when you start withdrawing from friends and family and just feeling hopelessness, that is a telltale sign. Um, mm -hmm. Excessive guilt. Um, can be one of the signs. Um, I mentioned withdrawing from friends and family, reckless behavior. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we see our young kids or teenagers yeah. acting out and friends. Yeah, that really doesn't, friends, yeah. family, it doesn't yeah. seem like them or he or she are exhibiting signs and symptoms that just aren't characteristics of characteristic rather of their normal behavior. That's something, you know, that could be a warning sign and you want to take a look at that. Um, fatigue, if you're tired all the time, you know, that could be a sign of depression and anxiety. Um, changes in appetite. I, for one, when I lost my sister, I found myself eating out of depression. Um, mm -hmm. Some people don't eat when they're depressed, right? But for me, it was actually overeating, um, having that one too many cocktails, you know, leaning yeah. on unhealthy coping mechanisms. Um, yeah. And I'm not the social police, but, you know, if you're turning to drugs and alcohol and other things as a way of coping, that's not healthy and that's not going to end well. Also, mm -hmm. anger and irritability. If you're irritable all the time. I remember a couple of weeks yeah. ago, everything was bothering me that day. And I was like, what, what is wrong with me? Why am I just like letting every little thing bother me? And why am I right. just just and fidgety and irritable about everything. So I finally had to take some deep breaths, get outside, take a walk, remove myself and kind of like reset, right? Because right. there are things that we can do throughout the day to reset. Uh, I mentioned breathing. There's a really great breathing technique called the 448. Mm. You breathe in for four seconds, you hold it for four, and then you do a long exhale with the eight seconds. And you do that about eight to 10 times. And it really has a, a great power of resetting your mental psyche and putting you back in a place of calmness where you need to be so that you can go on throughout your day. Um, the last thing can be physical pain, persistent sadness, or trouble concentrating. Those are just some of the signs and symptoms that you can look out for um, in yes. terms of anxiety and depression. And of course, situational um, issues you know, arise, um, sudden loss of a job, sudden loss of a family member, um, domestic violence you know it's so many different things mm -hmm. that we can list that could trigger mm -hmm. um, mental health challenges but those are a few that i can name yes and thank you so much for sharing that and um that just reminds me to check on your friends and family because even if you you may have some of these signs and if you don't but you observe them and others check on your friends mm -hmm. and you know <laughs> how we always say oh how you doing oh i'm good Right. So you need to say, how are you feeling? How are right? you feeling? Because you know you're going to get I'm good and kind of go on with the small talk, right? But how are you really right. feeling today? That's and that kind of opens up the door, right? In a way that's non judgmental, and you're allowing that person to kind of share their thoughts and emotions for, uh, you know, that, that they're feeling or experiencing at that time. Yes. Thank you for that. That was a shift right there. That's the better question. Yes. I'm going to use that going forward. Um, and I also want to say, um, 
Thank you for sharing your grief too that you've experienced. And I want to remind everyone, if you're currently experiencing grief, I want you to join us tomorrow morning um, at 9 a.m., 12 p.m. when we start tomorrow. The first segment is a prayer uh, for all the lives that have transitioned um, over the past, over the pandemic, but even before then, if you've lost anyone and you are dealing with that grief, uh, we're going to have a prayer and a segment around that because, um, you know, I know sometimes, you know, dealing with the grief or how to properly channel it sometimes, that that is um, also what contributes to some mental health challenges too. Mm -hmm. So please join us for that. Um, and, and I'm glad you mentioned things like about your body because that's something I noticed about myself is... Um, when I'm not taking care of my body, I tend to be more anxious. I yep. tend to experience more anxiety. Um, and something that has come up really all day today is the mind-body-spirit connection. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, I even, as I read about this more, that um, we know that chemical imbalances in our brain uh, can contribute to different mental health challenges and illnesses. Um, but even that can come from the state of your body, what you're putting in your body. Yes. Um, and God has shifted me uh, to consciously uh, be aware of how what I'm putting into my body, um, e even down to like simple things like coffee. I'm an avid coffee drinker. I love coffee. But if I haven't gotten enough sleep, what I realize is I've drank I've drank coffee all day to like stay alert and in and in the zone but it leaves my body so acidic yeah and, and like the next day I'll, I'll wake up and i'll feel anxious and mm -hmm. like god what is happening mm -hmm. but the body and getting vitamin d right yes getting especially as women of color sometimes yes. we tend to lack vitamin d in mm -hmm. our systems and that's so important and just i had my gallbladder removed about six weeks ago and so mm -hmm. i've been going through this transformation yeah. Um, with my upper GI system and all that. And in the process, I lost like 18, 19 pounds. Mm. And that's actually, it's a good thing that I lost the weight, not how I lost it, but it just made me be more conscious to your point about what I'm putting into my body because I can't digest the same things. But I will say that now that I've lost some weight and I'm eating healthier and cleaner, I do feel better. I am not having mm -hmm. quite as many anxious thoughts or feelings of sadness. I have more energy. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And so many years and I'm pretty, I'm petite. I'm five one. Mm -hmm. and, I'm <laughs> and I used to just, you know, if something was good, like I love crab legs and a good crab broil. And I would just keep <laughs> eating even when I was full. And now I am honoring my temple and I'm like, okay, I'm full. I'm going to rest my body and I'll wait and eat in another couple of hours and, and really try to maintain a sense of balance um, from a health perspective in my body. And so you, you do have to, to your point, you got to honor the mind, body and the soul because it really is one. Yeah, it is one. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of connecting the dots because when you think about communities of color, do we have access to the right foods? What, food deserts what, galore. Food deserts, right? Even in our culture, what do we love to eat? <laughs> foods, you know, soul food, like things that, you know, again, we have to be mindful of how is that affecting the state of our health? That's and right. And that perhaps our, our food choices um, or food options um, are impacting our mental health too. Absolutely. And, yeah. And so um, thank you again for sharing that list. And if you're experiencing these things, I want you to know that you're not alone. Um, as I was preparing for this, um, I realized that um, even many people in the Bible struggled mentally. <laughs> Jesus and did. Like, it. Um, I mean, he, he talked about Jesus weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. I mean, he, listen, you know, he struggled. Right. He was very anxious the night, obviously, before he was crucified. And then there are plenty exactly. other times that can point to, you know, Jesus and uh, uh, some of his other disciples to your point, you know, experiencing yeah. anxiety and grief. And so, yeah, this is nothing that is new, but it's, it's new in terms of us being able to be open about it and talking. And so that is why we are shifting 
the narrative around this conversation and normalizing mental wellness. Yes, exactly. Especially even in spiritual communities and in the church too, right? Yes. Because even, even those places have been places of shame, you know, to to even not even share what you're going through. That's right. Um, but we're not facing anything that God can't deliver us from. Amen. Um, and so, you know, some other things I notice is that also sometimes mental illness can be a spiritual issue. Um, as well. So we have to look at both sides, right? Um, and I and I always kind of bring things back to how, you know, God is saying faith and works, right? So if we believe in the word and we know the word, we need to have the tools as well to um, to carry this thing out. And, um, and so I want to really center ourselves on like the practical tools. Like what are some practical tools to help maintain like good well-being? Well, some of the things, um, so we talk a lot about self-care and wellness. And so um, being able to one, uh, get help if you need it. I just want to start with therapy because sometimes that's still the elephant in the room. People know about it. Mm -hmm. They know the resources are available, but it's like they're kind of stuck in that rut of knowing about it versus taking that next step to get the help. So I do want to encourage people. And therapy is a lot like anything else. You may try one therapist and you might not feel like it's the right fit for you, but don't let that deter you from continuing on and finding the right therapist. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, seeking help from a therapist, some people may need to see a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist is actually a medical doctor that can prescribe medication. A psychologist mm -hmm. and therapist cannot prescribe medication. And, and, and you may or may not need it, but don't knock it if you feel like you really need it or if your loved one needs it. The other thing I mentioned mm -hmm. is getting plenty of sleep, eating a balanced diet because it does help you. Um, uh, what else would I say? Uh, finding out what makes you happy and tick. Uh, I think yeah. from a self-care perspective, it looks different for everyone. But I would say, find your inner child. Like, what did Candace like, right, when she was a child? Right. <laughs> now, for me, I love the peanuts. I love watching old cartoons sometimes. I love dancing. And I have girlfriends that we've been friends since the sixth grade. And so we have a text thread. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll just come on and, and, and talk and do a Zoom and and reminisce yeah. and, and just go back in the day and enjoy those times. So some people like to golf. Some people like to travel. I like to travel. That's actually good for my mental health because I feel mm -hmm. with nature and I feel closer to God when I'm out just discovering, you know, all these other wonderful places in the world to see. And so you have to be able to have really good, healthy coping mechanisms that work for you, though. Don't do right. what your best friend is doing or what's going to work for your husband or your partner may not work for you. So figure out what makes you happy and and incorporate that on a daily basis. So just like you scheduled, you know, to attend the virtual summit today and added that to your Google calendar or mm -hmm. put an alarm on your phone, put an alarm on your phone and set a meeting for yourself. Right. right. We make meetings for ourselves and incorporate that into our daily regimen. It's not yeah. about just on Saturdays or Sundays. And I know we have incredibly busy schedules, but. You have to make time for yourself every single day. And I think if nothing more we've learned in this pandemic, life is short. We don't yeah. know what tomorrow is going to bring. So take advantage of it. If the sun is shining, get outside and take a walk. It's been proven scientifically that when you get your endorphins going, you feel better. So right. let the sunshine in, let the light in, you know, pick up yes. that call from a friend that's calling. You might be like, oh, I don't really feel like talking right now. Well, that friend may need you and you might end up needing them just as much. So take those small moments in life yeah. and really enjoy those. Yes. I love that you shared that because um, God is saying like, make things simple again. Yes. Like, do what makes you happy. <laughs> How simple, yes. like, like it's a reminder, like, do what makes you happy. But it, it also reminds me of how much we've been, maybe even caught up in our careers and the busyness and doing whatever we feel like we should be doing. And, and we're not 
we're, we're missing out on what really makes us happy, what makes us excited. Um, and I also believe that points you to your purpose too. Like, yes. you know, you have um, your, your purpose is actually something that is enjoyable for you, that you would do for free, that makes you excited, like makes you light up. And that is the life that we have been called to live. You know, it's, it, it wasn't meant to be this burdensome. <laughs> No, and you have to be unapologetic about your time and your space, Candace. Yeah. And it's one thing now, if if no is a complete sentence, and I tell people that right. all the time. Ooh, yes. I can't be everything to everybody. And sometimes the answer is no. And you have to be okay with that. And you have to know yes. that your time is your time. And and, your and, time. and and really understand that and live yeah. by that. Yes, yes. We talked about boundaries. Boundaries <laughs> are a blessing. I say they boundaries are. are a blessing. They are. Look, uh, find your boundaries, people. Like know know what they are, and and don't be afraid to set those boundaries. It protects your peace and it protects your environment, so that you can have what you need to be your whole self, your complete right. self. Hundred um, percent. Yes, and so. Um, I want to go back to the topic of therapy. Okay. Um, because, you know, I've done therapy. Um, my husband recent, recently started therapy. Um, and something that we realized is that uh, therapy is expensive. It is. <laughs> I'm like, wait, if therapy is the answer, what happens for people who can't afford this? This is like, if you have to have some good discretionary income for therapy. <laughs> You're right. So I'm curious just to know your thoughts on like how can we how can we provide free therapy for all? Like, are there solutions you've seen or like what what are your thoughts just you know on 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 being able to access it? You know. Yeah, great question. Um, I wish you know therapy was free for everyone in America. So, so a couple things I'll add. Um, a lot of clinicians these days, um, especially since the pandemic they charge now on a sliding scale, which means mm -hmm. that it's, they charge a percentage of, of what you're you're making, right? Based on your salary. Oh, wow, nice. Um, yeah, uh, and so, you know, when you're doing your research and you're reaching out to the offices of the, the psychiatrists and, and psychologists, make sure you ask if they charge on a sliding scale to see if, if it's mm -hmm. affordable. That's a good question. A session yeah. could range anywhere from $90 an hour to $250 an hour, probably in mm -hmm. up some of the better therapists. And uh, the other thing I'll mention is a lot of major cities have what's called communi community boards. And mm -hmm. so you might want to reach out um, to like, you know, local community groups and organizations and, and Google community board in your area. And sometimes they do offer free therapy sessions in the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know Taraji P. Henson's foundation, um, the Boris L. Henson Foundation, at one point mm -hmm. was offering free therapy um, for people in the African-American community. Certain hospitals, like, for example, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and so Grady Hospital is like the largest trauma center here. They do actually have a psych ward. Mm. And so sometimes if you are having a serious mental health challenge, you can go to the hospital and then they can refer you out to a community organization that can possibly provide free therapy as well. So don't be afraid, you know, to ask your doctors as well. Um, there are some other really great websites. I mentioned betterhelp.com if you're looking yes. for a therapist and they ask a ton of questions. And so I'm not sure of all the prompts that they take you through, but they may even ask about what you can afford. So I would check out that site. I would check out psychologytoday.com. Of course, therapyforblackgirls.com is an incredible yes. resource. And they have a plethora of African-American clinicians that are available. Um, so there are some resources out there. I do hope that there is a day where we will see free therapy. Um, hopefully the federal government will pour back in some of the funds that were cut. A lot of states lost funding um, around mental health, but hopefully mm. everything that we've seen there is a great need out there and especially in yeah. underserved communities. So that's something that one day we at Silence of Shame hope that we can provide, you know, free therapy sessions in various communities once we continue to 
the God willing, we get a couple million dollars in and can start shifting some of this money out and pouring back in. But um, but there are resources out there. And it's like anything else, Candace, you really do have to do your research and do your homework, even just with your regular health care provider. Oftentimes, you know, mental health falls under a different policy. So make sure you're calling um, your insurance company and finding out what the procedure is for seeing a therapist and you know, does that fall in line with, you know, your regular policy? Do you need to get a, a right. next policy for that? So right. ask all the, don't be afraid to ask all those questions because it's definitely worth it. Yes. Don't be afraid to ask. Um, and thank you for sharing that because this is for everyone who has felt that there is a barrier to you accessing therapy. Yeah. Um, and so do what you can to ask those questions, to look into these resources, um, because a lot of people just need to talk, just talk things mm -hmm. out, talk through what you're feeling, what you're experiencing. Um, and I know you mentioned you're going through therapy yourself. Um, yeah. And like for me, the woman that I really, I'm going to try on Monday doesn't take insurance. And so mm -hmm. that's tough for me, but I had to make a decision. Like, this is something that I'm going to budget for. Um, right. But I really need it right now. So that's another thing too, is, if it's something you feel like you really need, you might have to forego those shoes or <laughs> that. Exactly. Or, exactly. You know, and, until you get yourself into a place where you're whole again. Yeah, that's that's what you just made me think, because um, someone mentioned to me that um, you can tell the priorities of someone by looking at how they spend their money. And I was like, oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Because, um, you know, sometimes you may have to prioritize your mental health. That's right. Um, and that, you know, just know that that will unlock many other things. Right. So, you know, the the meal or the shoes or yep. the whatever it is, you know, if you forego that for a little while, you know, you can have more than what you've been budgeted for in the first That's place. Right. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and I also right. want to list uh, another um, silence of shame. We have a partnership, and so many other organizations do as well with the crisis text line organization. This doesn't replace therapy, but if you feel like you're in crisis or you're having a tough time, and it's like three in the morning, you can text the word silence s i l e n c e to seven four one seven four one, and you'll immediately be connected with a crisis counselor. And you can text back and forth with them. It's free, it's confidential. And then they can also put you in touch with therapists in your area. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Can you say that one more time? Yeah, you can text the word silence, S-I-L-E-N-C-E to 741-741. And of course, our website is silenceashame.com. You can click on resources and find a really robust list of mental health organizations um, mm -hmm. and advocacy groups that could potentially help as well. And then follow us at Silence the Shame on Instagram because we post a lot of just helpful tips and information there as well. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Have the tools that you need like already in your tool belt. So you don't have to search, you know, That's if, right. you're in, <laughs> if you're in a time of crisis or you're just having a moment. <laughs> Yes, I have moments, right? We all have moments. We <laughs> so do. Yes. And yes. I tell people it's hashtag Jesus and therapy for me because I, yes. yes. I need my spiritual Amen. life. I need the Holy Trinity in my life. And I need, you know, uh, a therapy, a good therapist. Yes, Jesus and therapy, prayer and professional help. That's right. That's <laughs> they go right. hand in hand. Um, and I mean, Again, in addition to, you know, what you just shared, um, you're doing some amazing work um, within the music industry with the with your recent partnership with Sony. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, and providing mental health education training um, for 10,000 musicians and executives by 2023. Um, that is amazing because, you know, I'm surrounded by so many creatives and I've seen um, what um, I'll just refer to as the war of art. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. when you're trying to get that out or you're you're feeling what you're producing or you're just in the music industry or entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Um, we're going to talk about the arts and entertainment industry tomorrow. Um 
with Gail Bean um, and just, you know, the nature of that. And so mm -hmm. I know that this is so impactful. Um, so what is um, that mental health education um, going to touch on? Because I'm like, wow, we all need this. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'm really excited because my executive director, um, Jewel Gooding, is actually the one who built out the curriculum for us. So we're, we have mm -hmm. several different um, trainings. They're like 60 minute trainings and workshops. And so like we have one around um, understanding mental health, just kind of taking you through the different um, mental health challenges and illnesses that exist being able to recognize signs and symptoms and understanding how you can access treatment and care. Um, we have run around self-care and wellness um, in the workplace, uh, healthy relationships, right? So that could be in the workplace as well as at home. Um, we had one around um, maternal mental health, which is really important because a lot of women are, you know, mothers as well as, you know, career women. And so being able to find that balance, um, we're, we're putting one together now around um, executives and being able to talk to your employees for mental health and wellness. Mm -hmm. So what we also do is we incorporate um, different artists that have spoken on panels or that have been a part of content that we've created. So you might hear like a two minute excerpt from like a big crit talking about his mental health or Carrie Hilson wow. or different people like that. So we incorporate those into the training. So it's not um, just 60 minutes of someone kind of talking at a screen. Um, right. So we have like interludes and inter video interstitials and we incorporate um, content from experts like clinicians. Um, so it's a, it's a really good training that gives you just a basic understanding. I mean, think about like <clears throat> taking a CPR course <clears throat> excuse me, or something like mm -hmm. that. Right. So it's just a good way to give you just general knowledge and basic understanding um, so that you can help yourself if you feel like you may be exhibiting signs or, or symptoms of mental health challenges or someone in your family or one of your colleagues. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. You've been um, able to take your content and, and turn it into education and a yeah. course. That's right. Um, do you think that this could be rolled out into like multiple industries? Well, it's funny you ask. <laughs> so we have the soundtrack of mental health and, and that next we're planning on moving into sports um, with nice. the play, playbook of mental health. And I have a few other ones that we're working on, television and film, the fashion industry. Um, we even talked about the tech world. Um, so we can do these right. trainings um, with different organizations. So, yes, to your question, we do plan mm -hmm. to do. Um, various industries in the future. Yeah. Yes, that's that's so wonderful um, because it is a um, hmm, a stronghold, you know. Yes. That, um, yes, that again um, kind of manifests itself in different ways, you know. Absolutely. So um, I just see it going into multiple sectors. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yes, because again, the transformation happens with the renewing of our minds. Absolutely. So as we seek to transform the culture, you know, that can only come from a life that's been transformed. Yeah, and, and I do a lot of speaking too for corporations and, and colleges and universities sharing my story. I am a paid speaker, thank God. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'm out here, you know, booking a lot, several gigs a month, sharing my story and, and empowering folks around mental health and wellness. So if you work at a company or a university and you need a speaker, October 10th is World Mental Health Day. I'm booking right now around that time frame. So oh, let us wow. know. Oh, thanks for, thanks for saying that. Um, October 10th. Okay. I am definitely going to keep that in mind. All um, right. Because, yeah, that's necessary. And um, for all of you, yes, who are listening, uh, bring Shanti to your organization, to your company. Um, you know, again, it's it's something that um, so many things have gone unspoken. And um, that's what Silence to Shame really is all about, um, normalizing these conversations. Um, and so, so speaking of, you know, special days, I know this was a special month, September, it's um, Suicide Prevention Month. Um, and I actually did not know that until I got uh, one of your emails about the summit. And um, so you guys um, held My Life is a Gift. Um, and I met the woman who started that as well. Um, oh, Tanya. 
Yes, Tanya, thank yeah. you. Yes, around the same time, I've heard you know her story. I met her son. I've heard oh, awesome, Devin. Yeah, yes. and um, you know, um, unfortunately, this is something that's affecting our youth. Um, when I was researching and preparing for this, um, I saw that it's affecting um, our youth, particularly Black youth, um, it, disproportionately to any other. Um, age group or race group. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is, you know, kind of a thing we turn our head away from, but I want to um, really hold space for this, um, uh, just bringing awareness um, to suicide prevention. Um, and um, you have so courageously shared, you know, your experience with this. Um, and with your father, you know, we honor him. We've been honoring a lot of our parents today. Yes. Um, you know, our our speaker for the emotional shift, you know, shared, you know, a powerful story of her father's transition. Um, and I believe that we have um, uh, we're, we're carrying on carrying on legacies and destinies. And um, actually, tomorrow morning, her first our first segment is about that. Um, and so I would love for you to share, you know, any advice or encouragement um, for for those who have struggled in this way or are struggling in this way. Um, what would you have to share, you know, for this? Yeah. So, um, gosh, I this is something that um, my family have dealt with for so long. Um, the one thing is if you have a family member that has unfortunately died by suicide, don't be afraid to talk about it mm -hmm. because the shame and stigma can be debilitating for families. And so I've seen families just, you know, if someone has taken their life, they don't tell how it happened. They don't talk about right. it, they don't celebrate the life of their loved one. So try to find peace with honoring that family member because you know they were not in their right frame of mind when it happened and so it took me a long time to forgive my dad and so if i had to go back and do it all over again i would have went to counseling a lot sooner so that i could really understand about suicide and suicidal ideation and, and how survivors continue to thrive after their loved one um, has passed on Mm -hmm. And then if you feel like you are just dealing with, um, you know, thoughts of, again, hopelessness, not wanting to be here, you really do need to talk to someone. Uh, I ended up getting to a point where I had kind of gone in a downward spiral after my best friend took her own life. And it wasn't just that, but it was a lot of things kind of compounded together. And I had counted up all the pills in my medicine cabinet and... I wasn't sure what was going to happen that night. And so I ended up running into a friend who convinced me to call my sister and my sister, because we have another family member um, that suffers from mental illness. So she knew a little bit more about it than I did. And she convinced me to call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So I want to make sure I list that as a resource. It's 1-800-273-TALK. And what they do, they have crisis counselors available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they helped to kind of like just calm me down and talk through what I was feeling at that moment. And then I also texted my pastor um, and he told me, I'll pray with you, but you got to get help. You got to go to the doctor. And so being able to muster up that courage to talk to someone, try not to isolate yourself. Isolation can be really tough on someone that's struggling. And particularly if you're like, going back and forth and kind of hearing these thoughts in your mind of hopelessness and helplessness and not wanting to be here. And it wasn't that I wanted to die. I just wanted this pain to go away that I couldn't shake. Right. And so let people in, you know, oftentimes when you're we're going through a lot of mental health challenges, we're embarrassed or we're ashamed about it. And we don't want anyone to know what we're going through, even sometimes within our own households. And the worst thing you can do is try to go through these problems on your own. And so be able to let people in and share about it. Talk, talk to your doctors. Even now, when you go get a physical, they ask you, have you had signs of you know, right. depression or are you wanting to hurt yourself? So I like that 
you know, it's not a fully integrated process, but at least you have more doctors asking about that now and concerned and being able to provide resources for it. But just know that help is available. That's the hardest part in life sometimes is asking for help, especially as it relates to mental health and wellness. But we've got to shift that narrative as well in our hearts and our minds and in our culture and know that it's all right to ask for help. There's nothing wrong with it and that you are not alone. And maybe not every friend will understand. Maybe not every family member will understand. You also, it's about your circle of influence and the people that you have around you. So, you know, figure out what, you know, I'd say who's in your starting five, figure out who, what five people can you create a list or a little, you know, group on your phone and say, yes, okay, I'm called Keisha, Kim, John, whatever. Figure out who those people are for you, a coach, an uncle, an aunt, a family member, a sibling, a spouse, a partner, whatever. Someone that you know will be more empathetic than sympathetic and someone mm-hmm. that's not going to judge you and right. someone that will walk with you through that process so you don't have to go through it alone. Right. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing your story and your testimony. Um, And I'm so happy you're here. Can I just say that? I'm so happy. Thank you. I'm really proud of you, too. Congratulations on everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, um, he adores you and speaks highly of you. And I'm glad he connected us. And I adore him. He has an anointing on his life. So we're going to see some great things from free woman. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? He's our next guest. So we're in divine order. (laughs) And and, 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 um, I'm glad you mentioned about your support system, right? Because the next segment is the relational shift. Who is your circle of support? It is important. You got to have it. It's so important because we were not to be, we were not meant to be in this world alone. No, we came in through, you know, our mother's wombs and we were connected through the umbilical cord. So we were connected, Mm -hmm. you know, before Mm -hmm. we came into this life. And so it is important. And I realized that too, after my sister passed away, because she was like my numero uno and I went to her for everything. And I realized I need a bigger support system. I can't just place all my support in one person because as much as it hurts, I have to, I have to still keep living. Even though she's not here, I know she would want that for me. So I had to reevaluate what reevaluate my relationships look like in my life. Mm -hmm. And especially as you grow too, right? Because as you grow, your circle might change. It might. It might, and that's okay. And that's that okay. is okay because you, yeah. you find that you're doing things differently, you're thinking differently, you're moving differently. So you want to have like-minded individuals at the core of your relationships. You do, you do. So that is a that's an assignment for everyone. Who is your starting five? Make your list. Yes. Um, and if you don't have a complete lineup. Ask God who is in my starting. Yes. <laughs> Ask God who is my support system um, because we need that. We have to be surrounded um, by wise counsel, by people who's gonna who are gonna encourage us. Who are gonna remind us who we are on in those mm-hmm. moments when we forget. You know when we mm-hmm. need to pray, when we need to turn up. When we, whatever we need to do, right? That's right. You know, I always joke and say, I have all different types of friends. Me <laughs> too. Know, that's okay. Because I have true. some, you know, some friends you can't travel with. And that's okay. Right, right. Some friends you, you know. can take out in the evenings and party with. And some friends right. you worship with. You know, it's okay. Exactly, exactly. Um, but I want to ask something. Spirit just, you know, um, brought this on my heart. But um, have you ever um, um, talked or identified like um, how spiritual warfare is connected to mental health, mental illness? Um, we've done some work around um, spirituality and behavioral health or faith and behavioral health. Um, I know in a lot of I've read in a lot of cultures you know, some people feel like it's the spiritual demons, right? Yeah. That get into your head. And sometimes, you know, depression is actually an evil spirit. So yeah. I personally don't have a lot of um, insight, if you will, mm-hmm. into that. Yeah. But from a personal perspective, I can say when I was dealing with a lot of my suicidal ideation, it's like, 
I just had these thoughts racing through my head and I could tell that there was an unsettling in my spirit as well. Yeah. And so um, we know that sometimes, you know, um, our lack of faith can lead to fear, right? Yes. And fear can breed all kind of things, right, in your life in right. terms of the warfare. And so I do think there is a connection there. And so that is why I wake up every morning without my cell phone right in my face. And that took right. a lot for me. But right. not just on Sunday, but I wake up and I first thing I do is to try to thank God. And I ask the Holy Spirit to take control of my mind and my thoughts yes. because I know that I struggle. I know I still suffer, you know, with not clinical depression, but I get sad and and depressed at times. I also deal with anxiety. And so it is absolutely a connection there, especially if you are a real spiritual person, because I feel like the devil is always trying to come in and attack those that are trying to, to draw closer to God. Mm -hmm. And at this point in my life, every day I'm trying to draw closer to God. And so I have to make sure that I protect my mind and my spirit at all costs. That is why it isn't therapy or prayer for me. It, it's both. Yes. I, I must have both in my life because of the walk that I'm on in my life. I yes. am none of us are perfect and I am definitely a sinner like anybody else. And I have issues and problems and hangups, but I, I have made a conscious effort, you know, over the last 10 years of my life to try to really just do things differently and have a different mm -hmm. walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. um, not to yes. impose my faith on anybody, but it takes a strong person to deal with the spiritual attacks that might be coming your way. And right. if you already suffer from, you know, mental health challenges. It's almost like you got to double up. <laughs> um, Listen, you need the full armor, armor, the full armor of God. There you <laughs> go. So that, that's kind of what I would say to that. Um, yeah. There's absolute correlation there. And you have to figure out what works for you. And, be, and for me, it's about figuring out, and again, I'm still going through this, um, what God's will is for my life and what he wants for me. Um, and being able to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit um, yes. and and block all of the other noise out, if you will. Yeah, I'm real careful to say that if you if you are just, you know, praying and asking God to, to move these thoughts and demons out of your head that you won't necessarily have an anxiety attack. I don't know how that all works, but I do know that I need both. I need to talk to somebody because yes. I feel like God gave therapists the wherewithal you know, to do what they do and to help other people the same way he did, you know, with people in the church or faith leaders or what have you. And so that's why it's not an either or for me. It's a right. combination. And so that's been the shift in my life is to really put God and wellness at the forefront of my life to help me every single day. It has to become our number one priority again. Because yeah. otherwise the, the, the accolades, the awards, the jobs, the funding you might raise, the rounds and rounds of funding for your, it, none of that matters. If you're not healthy matter. and you're not whole and your mind is not good and you're not in a good place spiritually, none of it matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you can't take any of that with you. Yeah, you can't. And it won't make you happy mm -hmm. either. Um, and I heard tor tormenting thoughts, tormenting thoughts. Um, and how we, again, you said it, um, don't immediately pick up our phones because I feel that, you know, with technology, you know, it, it's been a blessing and a curse, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a blessing that we can all be here today together using yep. technology. Yep. Um, but on the other hand, you know, when you uh, start your day just fully immersed in the timeline, you know, you get caught stuff, up and go down a rabbit hole. Exactly. And, you know, personally, I had to battle um, self-comparison a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I started to do that. And I you're had not to, alone. We all do yeah, that. Yeah. God had to pull me out of that um, because that starts to torment you. Yes. Um, and and so we have to, again, protect our minds in that way. Um, but then but then deal with the thing that's causing you to compare yourself. Right. right. Why am I even doing that? Right. Um, so yeah. So I'm I'm glad we're now in community together. Um, 
I'm going to be uh, sharing this, you know, um, with everyone even after the summit so people have a chance to watch it. Um, and I also have, you know, just some amazing people involved. Um, I want to give a shout out uh, to Andrea. Um, she's going to um, a powerful coach uh, that is um, about to release. Um, a lot of things, um, but spiritual warfare actually is one of those things that I feel that we have to have tools to battle yeah. with um, mm -hmm. because that um, really, um, it, it's an open door to mental illness in a lot of ways. And so I know God wants uh, to heal and be able to protect ourselves um, That's right. in that way. Yes, yes. Right. Absolutely. Yes, but I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation me today. Too. I'm so happy you thank were you so much for us. having me. Yes, absolutely. And do you mind if I close us out in prayer? Today? Oh, it's funny, I was gonna ask you that. Oh my god, oh, okay. <laughs> so we're on the same page. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for reminding us that our lives are a gift. God, thank you for giving us another chance to move forward in our purpose and our calling. Uh, thank you for protecting us from everything unseen uh, that may hinder our walk, God. And thank you for bringing us back into alignment with you, into alignment with the vision that you have for our lives. Uh, Lord, I thank you for Shanti. I just lift her up and I ask you to bless her in all ways needed, always desired. I thank you for her healing. I thank you for her transformation. And I thank you for her courage, Lord. Thank you for um, the, the powerful vessel of silence to shame. Thank you for um, expanding their capacity to serve our people, God. Thank you for giving them the resources uh, to engage, to provide solutions, to provide healing, God. Everything that you desire, because you have already, um, you have already birthed this um, in Shanti uh, from the beginning. You know, from the beginning and the end. And so, I just thank you. Um, that you are using um, this organization uh, to be your light workers, your light warriors, God. And I ask for, again, a double portion um, of your blessings, of your resources, God. I thank you for every life that, have, that has been touched today. Um, and I thank you for all that you have planned in our futures um, and to remind us um, that we are all worthy of it. Lord, I lift up anyone who is battling with suicidal thoughts, God. Um, I ask that your presence just surrounds them. Your, your presence just fills their heart, God. Um, I ask you to just um, divert their path, God. Um, I silence the voice of the enemy. I silence the voice of the accuser. I cancel every tormenting thought that has attempted to disrupt their destiny and their purpose, God. And I ask you uh, to, to just give them a fresh wind, God. Give them um, a new outlook on life, God. Give them a fresh perspective. Uh, give them fresh eyes. Um, of who they are and who you call them to be, God. Um, and for those who are battling with isolation, with loneliness, God, with sadness, with a broken heart, with anything, any pain that they feel like they can no longer, longer bear, God, I ask you to, to heal their pain and to shift that pain out of their heart and to fill, fill it with your love, Lord. I thank you that this is a new day, a new beginning uh, for all of us here, Lord. Um, and I thank you that we will rise victorious now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Thank you. Of course. Of course. And um, thank you again. I can't say thank you enough. <laughs> oh, no need to you thank are, me. We you. Are are blessing. Yes. We are. You are. We, we all are trying to do our best, right? Yes. Um, to carry out his will. And so you are a blessing and and I pray God's blessings um, and continued um, anointing over your life. Amen. Amen. I received that. Um, and we are reconnected. So yes. I'll be following up with you to support, you know, everything that you're doing. 
Um, okay. Have a great rest of your conference you and um, appreciate it. Have a good session with 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 my number one mentee and and little brother, Free Free the Vision. Yes. Speaking of, we're gonna bring him to the stage next. I love how this is all connected. Um, we are about to get into the relational shift. <laughs> awesome. So 